Well, we are a week away from Election Day here in the district, nationwide also. In the district, voters will elect a brand new mayor. It comes four years after a dark cloud began lingering over D.C. City Hall. The current mayor remains under federal investigation. Three council members pled guilty to felonies. We want to spend the next three evenings profiling the three people who want to be the district's next mayor. We begin tonight with Muriel Bowser. She's the Democratic nominee and has the lead right now in the polls. Matt Acklin, of course, covers the district for us. He joins us now with more. Matt, I know a lot of people are saying that this is expected to be a close race. Yeah, Sean, it is certainly looking like this. You know, in this town, typically a primary election, that elects That's the it. mayor. Yep. But that is not the case this time. It could be a very close one. As you said, we're going to start out with Muriel Bowser, who is a council member facing current council member David Catania and former council member Carol Schwartz, who are all well known in this city. We caught up with each candidate recently, and to be fair, we asked them the same question about how they'll change the city, not only for the residents, but also for hundreds of thousands of people who travel here five days a week. Cheered on by her supporters on the first day of early voting, Muriel Bowser is coming to the end of a 19-month campaign that began at the same spot where this old picture was taken next to a good friend out in front of her family home. Bowser's family has always been committed to community service. Oh, how are you? Are you voting today? Good. You think we can count on you? No, they ain't counting on me. Can we count on you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Her 16-hour day begins with a workout. Then it's off to juggle her council job and campaigning, which gives her little time to sleep. Well, I need to be in bed by 10. I'm usually up by 5. I have an early workout. Our first question to Bowser, how will she be different, better than past mayors? My whole style of leadership has been about bringing people together, um, building a consensus, but setting forth a bold vision for what's next. So we're going to build on our momentum and include more people in it. Our second question is a look into the future. We asked, should she win four years from now when we play this interview back for her, what promise will she live up to? Her first promise, new jobs. I think we can get to 10,000 jobs. Another promise, new schools. There's a, a, a plan on the table, a proposal on the table that we need for new middle schools. So in my first budget, I am going to propose to the council capital funding for those four new middle schools. Our third question, we know as mayor her priority will be to the residents of D.C. But we wanted to know how she plans to make life better the hundreds of thousands of people who commute into D.C. each day. I have a regional focus, as you know, Matt. I've served on the Metro Board and the National um, Transportation Board for this region, um, and it's really important uh, that the issues that cross borders, transportation, crime, um, and uh, our, the quality of our air, those are all regional issues. As you can see there, Bowser is doing a better job of listing exactly what she plans to do if she's elected. She's been accused of being vague in the past. Her opponents will say that she hasn't done much in her years on the council. But Bowser disagrees, pointing to ethics reform as a major accomplishment. And Sean, Scott, a little something that you might not know. She is currently on a diet. She's cut out the carbs. Okay. She's cut out the sugar. She says she can deal with that. The hardest part yeah. is her lemon drop martini that she has every night. No more. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. and I said, well, I can relate to that. You know, I mean, there are, there are a lot of us right. who could relate right. not dealing with that lemon drop martini. It's, it's good. She loosened up a little bit and, and is, is looking forward to it. But, you know, the mayor's race has been hard. There's been a lot of yeah. stones thrown. But um, she smiled a little bit and said that even through this all, she's trying to go on a tough diet. She works out most every day. And... Uh, She's got to give up that lemon drop martini. Let me ask you, I mean, you know, I know you're out there and you hear from people you live in the district. What is the general feedback from the public? As you said in the past, we know typically whoever the Democrat is who, who wins the um, primary goes on to become mayor. It's almost like a shoe-in. Yeah. Not the case this time. What's the pulse of the people? It, it's not the case this time. What you hear over and over again is they don't want to deal with this investigation that they've had to deal with right. over the last four years. It really has been a sad time in the district. Three council mm -hmm. members have uh, been charged with felonies. So they're looking at this next person, whether it's Bowser, Catania, mm -hmm. or Schwartz, to lead the direction, uh, lead the city in a better direction so we don't have to face these things anymore. And uh, and it, it could be close. You know, some will say that it's not, that she might run away with it, but others are saying it, it really will be close.
And by the way, mm -hmm. tomorrow night we are going, as you see the graphic here, we are going to profile Councilmember David Catania, who is running as an independent. Polls show him trailing, but also close. He's got a lot of support in this town, and we are going to talk to him tomorrow night. And then on Wednesday night, there you see her, Councilmember Carol Schwartz, former Councilmember Carol Schwartz. Mm -hmm. We're going to profile her on Wednesday night. All right, looking forward to hearing all the pieces. Yeah. Thank you, Matt.